Hey folks, this is Jeff again. I'm gonna do a short video because I've had some requests about how this isolation transformer is actually connected into the circuit. And I'm gonna walk you through that. To explain to you. Pardon the mess in here. I've been been working on a couple other things, trying to get the room uh, insulated. This panel right here is my inverter grid input panel. On the other side of the wall, I have my first utility panel that comes from the meter for the power company, and in that panel, my neutral is bonded to my ground and I have a ground and electrode I have two 10 foot ground rods on the outside I have a ground and electrode conductor that runs to that first panel ties into the bus bar the grounded bar and that bar is bonded to the neutral bar and that is the only place that the utility neutral is grounded on the grid side. Now you're gonna see something else here on the on the derived neutral at the transformer and I'll explain that. But my power comes into this panel at the top. That's energized so I'm not gonna be bothering it. I have my two hots, my L1 L2 and neutral but going out to the inverter the grow watt 5000 ES only takes 240 volt input plus it has a place for the ground so I'm running 240 volts to the input side of the inverter to the AC input side of the inverter now, I'm going to show you something on these inverters. These inverters were made probably for the international market and then slightly modified for the American market because you'll see it says L1 and N. I don't have my glasses on, but I think that also says 240 volts. Let me put them on. That's 230 volts. Okay. Now, internationally, I think this is correct. I'm not an expert on international electrical standards. But in most of the countries around the world, they use 240 volt service with one of the legs grounded. So you have a grounded conductor in, which is kind of what we would call L2, except our L2 is not grounded. They strictly have a two wire service. In the United States, we have a three wire service but they have adapted this inverter for the American market by removing the bonding screw between in and the ground. So in inside this panel is not tied to the ground. It's strictly in, in our nomenclature, we would call that L1, L2, and then on the far left would be our ground. Now these inverters are really handy. They're not very expensive. I think there was like $900 for this 5kW inverter and it does a lot of stuff. But it also requires some extra steps to make it usable in the American market. So as you can see, 
this is my utility input panel an inverter input panel from the utility strictly 240 volts going to the inverter and a ground coming from the inverter are these conductors here each inverter is fed into the load side of this breaker is back feeding the breaker energizing the bus and then it comes out of this breaker here now the inverter does not have a neutral connection as i mentioned before even though it's labeled in over there it's actually l2 for the american market so there's no neutral wire run from the inverter two hots and the ground so i didn't have to worry about a ground bar because i didn't have a neutral to contend with so i've run all my grounds to this bar and i bond it this bar to the can now as i've shown in a previous video there the voltages reference to ground changes on the output of that inverter based upon whether it's in bypass mode or inverter mode when it's in bypass mode the grid power passes straight through the inverter and comes straight here and in that case my voltage from line to ground is 125 volts it's, it's got a reference because the grid is coming straight through and the grid ground is tied to the neutral grid neutral so i have a ground reference and i can check the voltage line one line two to ground of course line one l line two is the 240 volt now when it's in inverter mode the grid does not pass directly through the inverter. Everything goes through the inversion process. And then when it's going through the inversion process, whether it's the battery, whether it's the PV panel, or a blending of the utility and the PV panel, the inverter output is isolated from the utility input. And it has to be that way Otherwise, you could back feed into the electrical grid, which is a big no-no. So that's the reason these inverters are set up. They're not grid-tied inverters, meaning we cannot back feed the grid. We cannot back feed our meter or do any net metering with this system. It takes a grid input but it does not produce a grid output. All right. Now when the when it's in inverter mode, as I mentioned, L1, L2 have no reference to ground because the inverter is strictly putting out 240 volts. And as I've shown in another video, when I measured the voltage from L1 to ground, I think it was like 99 volts. L2 to ground, it was like 148 volts which is not surprising because the whole thing is floating when it's in inverter mode. So to remedy all that is get me the neutral that I have to have for my house, I come through an isolation transformer. That breaker right there, out of the top, the back piece out of the top, it comes into this transformer to the primary side. This is the primary side right here. This is a 50 kVA 240 slash 480 volt or 240 dash 480 volt slash 120 240 volt transformer. And what that means is this winding can be configured for 480 volts or 240 volts. And the secondary can be configured for 120 or 240 or a split phase 120 240 which is the way I have this set up basically what you have in this transformer 
are two sets of windings on the primary side. Uh, there are two 240 volt windings that could be connected in series to, so you can connect 480 volts to the primary or they could be connected in parallel so you can connect 240 volts on the primary which is what I've done. This is a uh, H1 and H3, H2 and H4, H1, H2 being one winding, H2, H3, I mean uh, H3, H4 being the second winding. So if I connect H1 and H3 together with this bus bar, and I connect H2 and H4 together in this bus bar, then I'm paralleling the primary winding. So I'm putting in 240 volts. Now on the secondary side, it's the same thing, except the windings are 120 volt windings. And in this case, I've kept them in series. So I have X1, which is uh, the other end of the winding is X2, but X2 is in series. Uh, with X3 and X4. So this winding is in series. So there's 120 volts from here to here. Now this is all dead, so don't worry about that. 120 volts from here to here, 120 volts from here to here, and 240 volts across. So this is where I'm picking up my neutral, right? Now, this neutral has to be bonded. I didn't bond it in this transformer because I wanted to have control over that. You could bond it in the transformer here if you wanted to, but I've chosen to bond it in what I'm calling my system output panel. So the ground, the ground runs from, from the outside panel from the ground rod to the outside panel from there to this ground bar from this ground bar to the inverters to the inverters and back and from here down to there and from there up to here is one common ground wire and it is tied to the neutral in this output panel now I can do that because the primary side and the secondary side of the transformer is isolated. That means L1, L2 on the primary side is isolated from L1, L2 on the secondary side. And I've derived a neutral. It's called a separately derived neutral. And in that case, my first panel on the low side of the separately derived neutral from the transformer the ground is bonded or the neutral is bonded to the ground so that's what I've done now I showed you the most voltages before in a previous video of how the voltages remain consistent phase to ground or line to ground L1 to ground L2 to ground regardless of whether the inverter is in bypass or in inverter mode. There will be no ground loops because of the isolation transformer. Now, the auto transformer is a different type of transformer. And most of the ones that you're look, you see on YouTube are little 5 kVA transformers but in essence what they are is a single set of windings of a transformer this has two sets the primary set and the secondary set in an auto transformer you only have a primary set so basically what you're doing this would stay in series. Let's just use this down here for example. 
you would bring in on an auto transformer you bring in 240 volts from one end of the winding to the other end of the winding and it has a center tap that you're connecting your neutral to and since it's in the center you've got 120 volts reference from the neutral to L1 and 120 volts from the neutral to L2 all right that's how the auto transformer is generating the neutral now the auto transformer has no isolation between L1 and L2 because you only have one set of windings so when you're running in inverter mode you have L1 coming in L2 coming in and then you have your neutral going out well you have to have a reference for that neutral to ground for your protective circuits to work your ground fault protection to work and for your personal safety so you have to ground that neutral at the first panel on the load side of the auto transformer. But that creates a problem when you're in bypass mode. Because when you're in bypass mode, L1 and L2 from the grid pass straight through. And it already has a reference to neutral it already has a neutral from the grid and that neutral is bonded at your first panel so what you end up doing when you're powering from the grid is you're creating a second neutral that's going to be in parallel with the grid neutral it's also going to be bonded to the ground so you end up with a ground loop and that's the number one problem with an auto transformer with these hybrid inverters when you have grid input. If you don't have grid input, it, this will not be an issue with an auto transformer, okay? The grid input is the problem with the auto transformer. Now the auto transformers have other problems and I'm not gonna talk about other than just to mention the protective circuits and how a lot of people are connecting them on YouTube is going to give you some some serious potential problems with your equipment. But anyway, that's my explanation of how this is hooked up, and it, hopefully you, you found that helpful. All right, enjoy the rest of your day.